Hi, everybody, and welcome to Dream State Talks. I'm Jade Jones here, and tonight we are going to talk about alcohol, kind of an off-the-wall topic. We are going to talk about the Samaritan. We are going to share with you some information that we found in a book. We are going to read some bedtime stories, because we've forgotten our stories and forgetting our culture, which... We are not entirely to blame for, however, now isn't the time to play the blame game. Now is more the time for us to wake up and to acknowledge that we can do our part to make the world a better place by changing the decisions we make. So what is altruism? Altruism is what the Good Samaritans are said to have had. Altruism is the behavior of doing for others without thinking of oneself or what one will benefit from that action with. So this person goes out of their way to hold the door open for the old lady at the bank. This is the person who donates to charity because they feel like that's their type. This is that person who will sit no matter what time of day, no matter what state they're in and listen to you if they think you've had a hard day. and Sometimes these are the people who will go out of their way to push themselves until they have actually hurt themselves. And we call them wounded healers because these are the ones who love and who give of self so much that it can at times become detrimental. So we want to teach people how to walk a balanced spiritual path and how to live as spiritual beings having a human experience. So one of the ways that we do that in indigenous culture is we tell stories. And back in the day of our ancestors, we would speak these stories aloud. They were an oral tradition. And so it wasn't until much later that we had a version of them written down that we could go by. I wouldn't say that our modern retellings, because that's pretty much what they have to be considered, um, are a 100% accurate depiction of what the stories started as because history plays a telephone game. But I have found something close. This is a book called Sky Woman, Legends of the Iroquois by Joanne Shenandoah and Douglas M. George, illustrated by John Fadden and David Fadden. And I thought this would be useful because I wanted to talk as well about a tribe of healers called the Bear Clan. And the story I chose for tonight is how the Bear Clan became healers. So this is the book. It has very beautiful illustrations in it. I'm gonna to try to just read you the story itself. And when we're done, we can talk about it a little bit more if you want. Sound good? All right. So how the Bear Clan became healers. Once long ago, in an Indian village on the southern shores of beautiful Lake Ontario, there lived a people called the Iroquois. They had nine different families or clans named after animals the Iroquois felt were special. These clans were the beaver, wolf, turtle, snipe, deer, bear, hawk, eel, and the heron. Each clan lived in its own building called a longhouse because they were up to 300 feet in length. Each clan had their own part of the village where clan members grew food such as corn, beans, and squash. But despite all their gifts from the creator, the Iroquois had become selfish and greedy. When they became sick, they were so jealous and fearful they trusted no one to help them, so the gift of healing was unknown to them. One day, an elderly man arrived at the village. The man was bent with weariness, his face wrinkled and dirty, his clothes ragged, his moccasins torn. He was weak with hunger from his long journey. As was the custom among the Iroquois, he went to the first longhouse he saw. This building had a beaver sign painted on it, so he knew the beaver clan lived inside. Since the Iroquois believe all homes were owned by the women, he approached the oldest woman, <clears throat> the oldest woman there, and asked if she had any food to eat. She sent him away, saying they had nothing to spare for a useless old man. He could see the house was full of drying corn, and he smelled a rich stew cooking in a great pot hung over the fire. The old man stumbled onto the longhouse of the eel, where he was pushed aside and simply ignored while they feasted on venison and fish. 
He then went to the herons, where the entrance of the longhouse was blocked by a group of mean young men who called him terrible names. It seemed every family forgot the creator's instruction to honor the elders and feed the hungry, for he was turned away by every clan. Finally, just as he was about to faint with hunger, he noticed a small bear clan log house, longhouse at the edge of the village. A young woman was leaving the longhouse when she saw the old man. She immediately went up to him and brought him inside her home. The home was poor when compared with the longhouses of other clans. The young woman sat the old man next to the fire in the seat of honor. She spoke gently to him as she washed his face and hair. She quickly prepared a warm meal of corn mush sweetened with strawberries and maple sugar. When she saw he was sleepy, she prepared a warm bed of soft furs. When he awakened the next morning, she had sewn new buckskin clothes for him and repaired his moccasins. The woman, called Little Light, spent many days with the old man, even asking him to teach her children. Little Light grew to love the old man for his gentleness and wisdom. It was therefore not surprising that she was alarmed when she found that he had become ill during the night. He told her he had a stomach ache. The Iroquois had no cure, since they had no knowledge to heal sickness. He told her there was a plant called ground ivy growing in a certain place. Before taking the herb, she was to make an offering of tobacco and say a prayer of thanks to the plant. Then she was to bring the plant to the longhouse where he would show her how to prepare a tea which would cure him of his sickness. Little Light did exactly as she was told and was very happy when the old man got better. She called all of the village together for a great feast to share her joy and tell her <clears throat> how she helped heal the old man's illness. Her happiness did not last long. The next day, the old man could not rise from his bed because he had great pains in his head. He told the worried Little Light, she was to go into the forest where she would find the beech tree, a special place. She was to take a piece of the tree's bark and leaves, but not before making an offering of tobacco and thanking the tree for using its powers. She did exactly as she was told. <clears throat> she brought the bark home and following the old man's instructions, prepared a potion for him to drink. He was swiftly cured. Every day, the old man was ill with a new sickness. One morning, he complained of crippled hands, which she cured with chestnut leaves. When he lost his voice, she was instructed to prepare a tea from the inner bark of the chestnut. He had a fever, which she treated with the bark of the pussy willow. So it went on and on for many weeks. <clears throat> Each day, Little Light followed his instructions, found the right plants, and made an offering, gave thanks, and prepared the medicines as she was told. Little Light never complained, even when she was afraid the old man would never be well. One day, as she was carrying yet another medicine plant for the old man, she noticed a bright light coming from within the longhouse. Hearing there was a fire, she rushed towards home. Just as she reached the door, a young man, surrounded by a beautiful, warm, white glow, stepped outside. Little Light shrank back in fear, but he reached out, and then the gentlest word she had ever heard spoke to her. The young man said he was the creator. He was concerned that human beings had forgotten his instructions for them to be kind, generous, and always to respect their elders. He said, all people suffer sickness. He had provided a cure for every illness, but the Iroquois had become too greedy and mean to learn. He had come in the disguise of an old man to see which person had the goodness of heart to relieve suffering. He said, all the clans but for the bear had proven to be unworthy. Because of Little Light's generosity to a ragged old man, the creator would give all Bear Clan members the power of healing. So it is from that day to this, because of the good heart of a young woman called Little Light, the Bear Clan have been the healers for the Iroquois people. I decided to read this story to you because I thought that it pointed out pretty simply, because it's a children's story, how we can best have an example of what to be in the world, because I feel like a lot of us just don't know or just don't think that that kind of action is enough right now. And I'm here to tell you that one small act of kindness definitely does make a difference in somebody else's life, even for just a single moment. And for that moment, it raises your frequency, it raises their frequency, and that's two parts at least that are raised in the universal consciousness and this multiversal consciousness that we are all a part of. And I thought the story also illustrated that when we are kind to each other and we raise our frequency, 
we reach a, a point in our healing journey that we call the awakening. And I, I don't consider awakening to necessarily be the first step in the spiritual journey at times because there's always a before. There's always the question that comes up when people are talking about when they first experience the path opening up for them to become healers. And so because of that, I don't think there's always the big, aha, this is my purpose moment in the beginning. I think it starts simply. Maybe you had a loved one who had an illness like the old man in the story, and you came to your path honestly because you wanted to learn how to be more nurturing and compassionate and healing in that person's life. And that is something that ultimately is altruism. You're going out of your way to learn to be a better person and a good caretaker for a member of your community. And that is such a powerful healing choice that not a lot of people feel like they can step into. However, there are those of us who do feel like we can change that flow. We can manipulate that energy in such a way that it becomes harmonious again. And I think ultimately the way back to harmony is for everybody to practice random acts of kindness, for everybody to be altruistic. I think that this leads us to be more uplifted more empowered to do kindness in the world and to speak out when we see things that are unjust. Um, I believe this is the way that we motivate forward momentum and change in the world because we've tried other routes before. I don't think this is a war that's going to be won with guns. I don't think this is a war that's between one country or another or one credo or another or one race or another. I think that this just comes down to the fights we have with those inner wolves in the Cherokee legend of whether you feed the good wolf that is all love and compassionate and healing and the other wolf that is jealousy and negativity and basically stagnation. And you have to make the decision every day to do that. And if you support the good wolf as it is, you're essentially feeding into raising your vibration. You're taking on the battle against who you were five minutes ago, who you were yesterday, who you were 10 years ago. That's the healing journey. And when we go on our own personal healing journeys, it's kind of like a 12 step program. You get to step five and you have to make amends. You have to let things go. You have to forgive. These are all altruistic acts. I'm just listing them out for you guys because I just really think understanding the way it can be done really does help. I think all of these things are acts of kindness. I think all of these things are altruistic because you've untethered yourself from that painful moment. You freed up the tension there. It's kind of like letting go of the rope in a tug of war game. When you forgive somebody, you let go of that rope. It lets them have that energy back. You've done them an act of kindness by forgiving them, and you've done yourself a service by releasing yourself from that old pain. This is the kind of stuff that I want to help people do. This is what I feel like is really important in the world, and that's how I came to my path, because no, I don't think all of us sitting down around a campfire and holding hands and singing Kumbaya is the answer, but I think it's a start. Maybe not kumbaya, but we could do a drum circle. We can roll up and we can do a drum circle. I'd be fine with that. The mother would be fine with that. The creatrix would be fine with that. I would be sharing my medicine with you at that point, and you would be able to share that medicine back with me. Your medicine. So find it. Figure out what it is inside you that you want to share with somebody else that would make their life better. That could be five minutes of your time listening to somebody just talk about their day and being available, completely available. It could be 
doing something nice for somebody else, you know, for somebody else. You can hold open a door. You can pay for that person's meal. You can bring that homeless man a bottle of water. I think this is the way we kind of have to teach people to start being healers for themselves and for other people, basically. That's why I wanted to come on here and talk to y'all about this tonight, because everybody has the potential to heal. No matter how bad it gets, you still have to go on your healing journey to be able to get proper self-care, to be able to properly be balanced in your life. And so this is, I think, how we start. We don't all have to start out having encyclopedias of herbs dumped into our foreheads and all of the past life work done and all of the, the, all of those labels. We don't need all of that stuff to get in the way of the actual work because yes, drinking the teas will help you. Yes, pulling the cards will help you. Yes, doing those energy healings will help you. All of that is important work. But if we could just be kind to each other, if we could honor our healers for bringing us the information and saying, this is the way we get it done, I think we would have a lot less work to do. The perspective itself would change away from being work to do to, you know, I'm doing what feels right. I'm honoring my spirit. I'm honoring this person's spirit. And that doesn't have to be work. Work sounds like a chore. If we look at kindness like a chore, we'll never get it done because we are too wired to procrastinate in this day and age because it just takes too long to see results sometimes. But that's why we have to respect our healers, like Sings with Alice is saying now on Facebook. That's why we have to respect our healers because our healers show up every day and they do this. They forgive, they work on it, they flow, they teach. They share their wisdom and they share their knowledge. They show up for us every day in our communities. And we have to look at those people and say, can I model behavior on this that I can take forward with me out of whatever this moment is, whether it's a session or a conversation or just passing them on the street and turn that into something I can pay forward for someone else. Our healers are the ones that have been trying to tell us this stuff. Our healers are the ones that are giving us these stories and sharing with us what we need to know. I think I have ranted on on this long enough. I hope that I have inspired somebody to go out and be kind to somebody else. Uh, I don't mean to sound so aggro about it, but I just really want to put some love in the world really, really want to put more love in the world because that's what we need. I think a lot of people need to listen to more John Lennon. Listen to Imagine over again. Have yourself a boo-hoo sesh. Let's work on this healing stuff together. Let's respect our healers. Let's respect each other. Let's pay it forward. Peace and blessings, everybody. Tune in tomorrow for Witchy Wednesday with my bestie Sings With Alice and myself, JC Moonspirit. We'll be sharing with you our witchy wisdoms and our witchy, wacky Wednesday tiles. Peace and blessings.